Hi everyone, uh, this is the third lecture in pharmacogenomics uh, lecture series. Uh, in the last video, we learned about the genetic uh, variations that are important in pharmacogenomics. Now, we, will, we want to look into the methods that we can use to test these genetic variations and determine what genotypes uh, are we carrying. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to describe methods of DNA collection able to describe the uh, processes of DNA isolation and uh, amplification, able to explain the methods used in the detection of genetic variations and able to explain other advanced methods in genotyping. There are four main steps in pharmacogenetic testing. First, of course, you need to collect the DNA sample from the individuals of study. Second, you need to extract the, the DNA out of the whole blood sample. Third, uh, DNA amplification is needed to uh, multiply the DNA strands. And lastly, is the genotype detection itself. You might be familiar with this image of uh, sample collection for the detection of SARS-CoV-2 virus causing COVID-19. In this case, tissue samples were obtained from nasopharyngeal area where the virus is heavily populated. But for human DNA sample collection, we usually obtain from either blood, buccal cells, or uh, saliva. So other methods may also include dried blood spots. Because DNA resides in the nucleus of a cell, DNA cannot be extracted from red blood cells and platelet. So when obtaining a blood sample, the DNA comes from the blood lymphocyte. It is a gold standard with a high DNA yield and one meal of whole blood may contain about 20 to 30 micrograms of DNA. A sample of 3 to 5 mL of blood will usually enough for the purpose of genotyping. DNA can also be collected from buccal cells, either from cheek swab or using mouthwash method. These methods are non-invasive, less expensive than blood sampling, although generally buccal cells yield less than blood samples. With the proper technique, these sampling methods can also provide comparable DNA yield and quality as compared to blood samples. So you may have a look at how they uh, perform the buccal swab or the cheek swab method in this um, YouTube link. So the next step is DNA extraction. The aim is to disrupt the DNA cells and nucleus so that the DNA strands can be extracted up. So in this process, there will be a, dis a disruption of cells, denaturation of protein complex, inactivation of nucleus and other enzymes. We want to remove other biological and chemical contaminants and finally we want to precipitate the DNA. So these are the processes involved. It starts with the lysis of a red blood cell while we want to keep the white blood cell intact which was which was later collected in a pellet. So WBC will then lyse to break the nucleus and cellular membranes so that the DNA is freed into the solution. The solution was then centrifuged to separate the genomic DNA in the supernatant and the protein residue in the pellet. The supernatant containing DNA will then undergo elution to wash away residual proteins or impurities before it is ready for amplification. The next step is DNA amplification using a polymerase chain reaction of PCR. The amount of extracted DNA is usually low, therefore it needs to be multiplied before we can use it for genotyping. PCR has its own standard procedure with the controlled temperature cycles and PCR reagents. So we, as shown here, we have three cycles of PCR process or steps which include denaturation at this certain temperature, annealing, and elongation. So what we need for PCR are DNA primer. So it is designed to bind specifically to a complementary sequence of nucleotides on the single-stranded DNA molecule. So it should be specific to which region that we want to amplify. Second is deoxynucleoside triphosphate, DNTP. So these are the pool of 
nucleotide bases that we want to generate during the amplification. Third is the buffer. And fourth is the DNA polymerase, for example, DAC polymerase, which is commonly used. So DNA polymerase is the enzyme that will catalyze the formation or the replication of DNA. So the processes involve denaturation, annealing, and elongation. And it will be repeated about 30 to 40 times to produce uh, an ample number of DNA strands. So if we look, as we look here, the first cycle, the uh, DNA is in double-stranded form. And during the denaturation process at 95 degrees, so it will separate from each other. And the primer will anneal to the location, at the specific uh, location of the DNA strand. And then annealing happens at this uh, at around 50 degrees Celsius, where the primer will attach to the specific location of the DNA strand. And at the 72 degree of Celsius, DNA polymerase will start its work uh, with generating the new strand of DNA using the pool of the NTPs that we have um, included. And later, it will form two copies of DNA. And in cycle two, the new strand of DNA will further undergo the same process. So it will multiply again. So this cycle will be repeated for 30 to 40 times until we have a, an enough number of DNA strands. So next, uh, which is the last step, is the genotype detection. So I outline here six um, types of genotype detection tests that we can use for the genotyping. The first one is the uh, restriction fragment length polymorphism, RFLP. So RFLP is a technique invented long ago in 1984 by this uh, scientist, Alec Jeffries, during research into hereditary diseases. So this um, RFLP method consists of five steps, um, starting from the beginning of DNA sampling and DNA extraction from the samples uh, from blood or saliva or the buccal cells. So this extracted DNA will undergo amplification or multiplication um, through polymerase chain reaction that we have discussed before. So later, the DNA will be cut into fragments by the restriction enzymes, which is very specific to the certain location of the genetic variation that we want to look at. Next, we will perform the gel electrophoresis to separate the DNA fragments according to its uh, size and length. And the size and length of this uh, DNA fragment will be visualized or detected uh, using luminescent dyes. So RFLP method needs uh, a restriction enzyme. So the DNA will be digested using this uh, restriction endonucleases and this enzyme recognizes, so DNA will be digested using a uh, restriction enzyme. For example, here is the restriction endonuclease, and this enzyme will recognize the GAGC sequence in the DNA strand, and it will cut the DNA at every repetition of this GAGC pattern. So for example, if one sample uh, repeats GAGC sequence four times, whilst another sample repeat it two times because of genetic variation, then the length of fragment that is gener generated by the enzyme uh, from the two samples would be different. So this is how we want to detect whether these um, uh, individuals are having genetic variation or not. It is based on the length or the size of the DNA that has been cut by the restriction enzyme at a specific location near the genetic variation. So this is the gel electrophoresis method. So this is how the band of the DNA will be visualized. So these are the steps in gel electrophoresis. An agarose and buffer solution is poured into a plastic tray and a comb is placed into the tray on, on one and so this is a solution of agarose buffer. We pour it in the tray 
you put a comb here and we wait it until it cools down and the comb is removed from the gel so it now it form wells this wells is where we will put the DNA samples there and the DNA samples are pre-treated with a tracking dye and it will be pipetted into the wells so each column have a different uh, samples from different individuals or different uh, restriction enzymes. There. The tray is placed into a chamber that generates electric current through the gel. So the, gel, so the negative electrode is placed on the side nearest uh, to the sample and the positive electrode is placed on the other side. So we run an electric current through the gel. So the DNA with the negative charge will be drawn to the positive electrode and the smaller molecules will be able to travel faster through the gel. So this is how the DNA fragments are being separated from each other. So one well called a DNA ladder will contain DNA fragment of known sizes. So this ladder is used to determine the sizes of other samples. So we will put at the um, so we will put a sample or the control. So we will put a control sample uh, usually at the uh, at the end in which it will be used as a determinant for each um, kilobyte or the length or the size of the DNA sample. So the subsequent letter will contain the samples that we want to detect. Uh, this is another diagram explaining about uh, RFLP. So for example, in these um, genotypes, each of the three variants or three genotypes are represented differently in terms of the DNA fragment. And using this restriction enzyme in which the enzyme will cut um, in these three locations, but then if the, another individual have a mutation in this site, the enzyme will not recognize this site and it will not cut here. So in the end, that person have a longer strand of uh, DNA fragment as compared to the other control sample. So this is how we differentiate between two uh, normal and a mutated DNA strand using gel electrophoresis. So the second one is the island specific polymerase chain reaction. So you know PCR already, which is the, uh, the amplification of DNA. So island specific Polymerase chain reaction actually uses the uh, PCR method. The so allele specific PCR is an advancement of uh, the regular PCR in which it can detect uh, known SNPs during the PCR itself. So it was developed six years after PCR was invented. So in this method, allele specific primers are designed to permit amplification by DNA polymerase only if the nucleotide at the Three prime end of the primer perfectly complements the base at the variant or wild type sequences. So it means that during the amplification itself, um, there the the allele the primers that are used are already specific to the location at which the genetic variation that we want to look at uh, occurs. So the um, amplification of the DNA strand occurs at only, only at the location of that specific uh, genetic variation. The genotype will then be detected using a probe. So for the detection of the uh, genotypes, the allele specific primers are usually labeled with fluorescent dye in order for it to be um, detected. So for example, we have a SNP of interest here. This um, DNA strand undergoes PCR in which the DNA strand is uh, separated and we have instead of a regular DNA primer, we have a little specific uh, primer that attach at the location near the, uh, near the SNP of interest. So it will undergo elongation and another cycle of PCR and it will come out as the a complementary tail sequence. For real-time PCR, or it is instead of a qualitative PCR, it is a quantitative PCR in which instead of looking at the bands on a gel at the end of the reaction, the process is monitored in real time. 
So the uh, amplification will be conducted together with the allele discrimination in the same step. And the advantage is that the reaction can be monitored whether it worked well and which have failed and there is no need to run the PCR product after the reaction and it can perform a quantitative analysis of gene expression so it can measure how much the gene was expressed. So high resolution melt, so it is one of the uh, method for genotype detection after the PCR. The region of amplified DNA is called amplicon. There is a specific temperature in which uh, the DNA strand will uh, melt apart. So when there is no polymorphism between two DNA samples, the result will give exactly the same shaped uh, melting curve. However, if one person has a polymorphism in the DNA region that was amplified, so this will alter the temperature at which the DNA strands. So we can see a different uh, melting curve as compared to those who do not have that polymorphism. DNA sequencing. So sequencing is a process of determining the sequence of a nucleotide in the DNA sample. So instead of detecting at a specific location of the genotype, we read the whole uh, sequence of nucleotide in a specific region of the DNA. Of the DNA. It was described in the 1970s by Maxim and Gilbert and Sanger, so it is later described as Sanger sequencing. Instead of we detect only the certain uh, genotype here or here, for example, we read the whole gen uh, nucleotide sequence for the specific region. Next generation sequencing, so this is the advanced uh, high throughput methods that enables rapid sequencing of the base pairs in DNA or RNA sample. So it performs sequencing of millions of uh, small fragments of DNA in parallel. So it is a high throughput, so we call it high throughput methodology in which we we can sequence millions of uh, DNA fragments at the same time. So it can, it can be either whole genome sequencing, which means it, it sequences the whole genome, or we want to do a targeted sequencing in which we want to sequence only the exome part or any specific genes of uh, interest. But uh, although it is a high throughput uh, method that contains rich data, it requires bioinformatic analysis to um, piece together all these fragments uh, by mapping the individual reads to the human reference genome. So it requires a lot of uh, post-analysis using bioinformatics. Microarray. So microarray is a technique that allows detection of massive number of polymorphisms or variations at a single time using a, a simple chip like this. So in this chip, for example, it can detect the genotypes in CYP2D6 and CYP219 enzymes. So, so in this uh, chip, it contains a lot of microscopic well or tiny spots and in which for each spot, it contains DNA probe that will detect specific uh, genetic variation or specific SNP each. So the DNA probe will hybridize the DNA or cDNA from the test sample. So this probe Target hybridization will emit a fluorescent uh, signal and it will be detected. These are other examples, gene chip by Affymetrix and bit chips. So this is the picture of the insides of the microarray. For each of the spots, we have different DNA strands with the probe. Each of these tiny spots contains different uh, DNA probe for each uh, SNP that, they that we want to detect. So practical considerations in genotyping methods, uh, as much as possible, we want to have an accurate uh, result of the genotype. And in, if possible, with one attempt only, and with quick and inexpensive uh, genotyping method. And we must allow for a fast and easy development of the assay and also validation. So all of the methods that we use, we need to validate first. So the result must be easy to interpret. So it must also be cost effective as well with the simpler and shorter steps. So these are the uh, references. So you need to know uh, at least the general four steps in pharmacogenetic testing, DNA collection, DNA extraction, DNA amplification and genotype detection. For DNA collection, what type of samples that can be used? What is the purpose of DNA extraction? Uh, the DNA amplification, the process, at least the basic process in PCR and the basic concept in uh, genotype detection methods. I think that's all. So thank you very much for watching.